It's bigger, it's smoother, it's more battery, more storage, it's more screen. It's the GTL Infinity 9. On this one, GTL went with the approach of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They improved on one or two things from last year's Infinity 8S and you can watch the review of that phone by clicking on the link on the top right hand corner of the screen. In the box, you get a pair of wired earphones, the charging brick and a cable, a semi-clear silicone pouch and a tempered glass screen protector as well as the paperwork. The front has a 6.5 inch HD plus IPS display with a notch up top that's got an 8 megapixel selfie on it. Above it is the earpiece and hidden within the bezel are the usual sensors. On the right edge is the power and volume buttons and on the left is the triple slot SIM tray for your dual SIM and a memory card for up to 256 gigs on top of the available storage. On the bottom edge is the headphone jack, the primary microphone, a micro USB port for charging and data transfer and the loudspeaker grill. On the back is the triple camera square looking very familiar to the iPhone with the fingerprint scanner just below it. The whole body is made of plastic but it's smooth this time and not textured like on the Infinity 8S and also it comes in two colors, a royal blue and an aqua blue. It's a pretty standard and clean design. The only big change on the back is the camera cluster has been moved from the middle to the left and that's about it. The GTL is running Android 11 and a pretty light skin on top. One thing I love is they keep it absolutely clean. The only apps that are not stock Android apps are the FM radio, audio recorder and calculator. There are also some subtle but nice animations whenever you leave an app. The app icon does a mini dance of sorts. Drop a like in the video if you like or hate it. I did feel like the animations were a little bit sluggish so I reduced the animation time in the settings to at least make the transitions feel snappy. Transitions aside, the UI is pretty nippy. Apps launch in a speedy fashion and even though some games take a little bit longer to launch, it's nothing to write home about. It is a decently responsive phone. It feels even faster if you reduce the animation times like I did. You also get some gestures for stuff like split screen where you can swipe up with three fingers and pick which two apps you want to use on the same screen. You can also swipe down with three fingers to take a screenshot if the power button and volume down combo is too much work. I never used the button combo to be honest. When you grab the phone out of the box, it has all the apps on the home screen. If you prefer a clean home screen with your apps tucked away in the app menu, you can change that in the settings. And if you have the app drawer, there is a section right at the top dedicated to the four most recently used apps. It can get pretty useful when the list of installed apps gets longer. When you enable gesture navigation, the bottom left and right corners will be dedicated to summoning Google Assistant and you can summon it from anywhere even whilst you're in another app. The software experience is alright, GTEL keeps everything clean, no bloatware in sight, warm subtle icon animations and no sneaky ads baked into the software which I love a lot. But what happens when we put it through its paces? Let's see what specs it has. The GTL Infinity 9 puts affordability above anything else, which translates to the spec sheet as well. It comes with 3 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage and a pretty low-end MediaTek processor. Most of the budget on this GTL seemed to have gone to the 5000mAh battery and the big 6.5 inch display. Even with such a humble spec sheet, the Infinity 9 did a respectable job. The UI is generally smooth and responsive. It does not let you wait before something happens. There is the occasional stutter when launching split screen, especially when you had a video open in an app like YouTube and in some games like this one where the phone was struggling a bit when too many moving targets were on the screen. The battery performance was not very impressive. It faced a 40% power drain after an hour each of gaming, video streaming and video recording. So even with a battery that's 20% bigger, the Infinity 9 lasts as long as the Infinity 8. The price to pay for a big screen. Overall performance is fine, for this price range it's actually pretty good and will satisfy anyone looking for a cheap phone to handle the day to day routine. 
The Infinity 9 has a 13 megapixel main camera and two extra 2 megapixel cameras which essentially just add to the camera count and that's about it. In terms of image quality though, the 13 megapixel unit takes some very good photos in the daylight. The AI scene recognition saturates colors just a little, making images look more vivid and vibrant than in real life, but it's just the right amount. I have no complaints about that. The focus is really good as well, it is very accurate. When I was taking these photos, it was on a very windy day, but by some miracle all the images were pin sharp. And when you take close up shots, the sensor creates such a good separation of the foreground and the background for some awesome background blur. Very impressive background blur from such a small sensor. It's a good camera in daylight. There is a night mode but it does absolutely nothing so don't count on GTEL for photos in poorly lit environments. GTEL took some pretty safe bets with the Infinity 9. It's mostly minor updates from last year's Infinity 8S, a bigger screen, a bigger battery, more storage and Android 11. These are the new bits GTEL added to the Infinity 9. The price jumped up a bit too by 20 bucks to 150 US dollars. This places the GTEL around some very stiff competition from the likes of the TechnoSpark 7 which was not as good as the Infinity 9 camera wise but better in every other department and all that being 5 bucks cheaper. It's also in the same league with the Samsung Galaxy A10, the Huawei Y7, Xiaomi Redmi 9 which all have better software and hardware backup than GTEL. The competition makes it very hard for the Infinity 9 to really shine, but at least what it has going for it in Zimbabwe's tight economy is that you can pay for it in installments if you're a civil servant. So the question is, is a good camera and more flexible payment options enough to make you buy the GTEL Infinity 9 over its competition? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.